Hello, this is the next video in a series I'm calling Transformations of Random Variables. And we're going to look at the distribution of, of the sums of chi-square random variables. And so for this video, we're going to look at x1 through x4 and uh, that are chi-squared with two degrees of freedom. Now, it can be any degrees of freedom you want, but I'm using two to help me in a, my next video. But we want to find the distribution y of, say, the sum of the, these two, the sum of these three, and the sum of these four. Um, so let's just start with one. And the density for each of these is chi squared 2, which is this degrees of freedom. And since they're independent, it's going to be the product of these two, which would become this for the first two. Now, um, since we're going from r2 space we need a map to r2 space but we only want to find the density for y1 but we're going to have to introduce sort of a another variable um, that we'll integrate out later and whenever we're integrating something out i like to draw a picture or an illustration of what's happening so this is x1 and x2 and here's the region and so this boundary uh, where x1 is zero you know, if you put zero here, then y1 and y2 are equal, which is this line here. So this boundary maps to this boundary. And then you can do something similar here. This is when x2 is zero. And so y2 is zero, and y1 is just x1, which ranges from zero to infinity. So this is the region that we're uh, mapping to. And when we integrate out y2, we're going to go from zero to y1. And you can see this by this relationship. Y2 has to be less than or equal to Y1, right? Because we're adding a non-zero, non-negative number here. So it has to be greater than or equal to, to 2. Now, when you back solve for X1 and X2, you get this. And the Jacobian of that is 1. So now let's uh, find the density of Y1 or and so this here is the joint density of y1 and y2 and that says that we plug in this value and this value into this function and so it's x1 plus x2 which then the y2's cancel leaving just y1 and the rest is, is just this so now to integrate out x2 there is no x2 so the antiderivative is just there's no y2, so the antiderivative is y2. And you plug in this and then minus plug in that, we're left with this density. Now this can be uh, manipulated a little bit to, to this. This is equal to this, but then you can see that the 4 and the 4, and so this is a chi-squared with 4 degrees of freedom. Now let's look at the sum of, of 3 chi-squared random variables and we get this so since we're going from r3 space we need to go to r3 space and that's so we introduced uh y2 and y3 and then we can max all for x1 x2 x3 find the jacobian and and but before we go, let's let's look at a region. We're we're gonna have to integrate out y two and y three. Um, so let's look at a region. But note that that y two has to be less than or equal to y one, and y three has to be less than or equal to y one. These these can be the same. So let's look at this region here. So this is x one, two, and three. And this is like the three sides of a cube. And so the boundaries is this plane. So if you map where this plane goes, it goes to this region here, which, you know, which is uh, parallel to the y1, y3 axis. And then um, this, re this floor, this bottom region is actually mapped to the floor here between y1 and y2. And then y3 um, I didn't put on here because I can't draw it, but it's a plane that intersects these two lines. It's kind of like on top on on top of it, and so this gets mapped to this cone coming out. So now let's uh, 
And so we have this relationship. So y2, y3 is less than y1, which means y2 is less than this. And then we know y3 is less than y1. And so when we integrate, when we want to find the density for y1, we take the joint density, which means um, plug in x1, 2, and 3 to here. And you notice that we get everything cancels but a y1, and we're left with, with this density here. So this is actually the joint density of y1, 2, and 3. Now we need to integrate out y2, which goes from 0 to y1 minus 3, and then, uh, then uh, y3 would go from uh, 0 to y1. Where did it go? So this is y3. Oh, no. So we, then we just jump in. There's no y2s here, so the antiderivative is just y2. And then when you plug in these, you plug in this and then minus plug in that, we get this distribution here. Now, next we need to integrate out 3, but I want to separate this into 2. So multiply this in, multiply this in, and you separate it into 2. Um, now, this one, there's no... Um, y3s so it is is easier you the antiderivative is y3 you plug in this and you get this information this one here the y1 squared and here this would be uh the antiderivative is one half y3 squared which is going to be this and now we plug in our limits here y1 and then minus plug in this the y1 becomes y1 squared. And then um, these two actually look like the same. So we, except for there's going to be an extra one half here. So you take a whole one of these minus a half one of those. You get a one half times this. And we write it like this because then it can be tricked into looking like this. So here this is a one, you know, two cubed. 2 cubed, and here's uh, 1 over 2, and this is gamma of 1 half times 6, which is uh, gamma 3, which is 2 factorial, which is 2, which is what that is. And then this uh, y1 squared is y1 uh, cubed minus 1, and then that just stays the same. And I write it like that to emphasize the 6. You know, this is sort of the standard form of a chi-square distribution was 6 degrees of freedom. Now let's look at uh, summing all four variables. And I'm going to go a little quicker this time because we've gone through <laughs> each of those for the two and three. So here you sum of the first four. Here is the density for x, one, two, three, and four. Uh, we're going to introduce these variables. Back solve for x, one, x, two, three. The Jacobian becomes one. Then uh, you start setting up relationships. Um, we know that y2, y3, plus y3, plus y4 is less than y1, right? Because we're adding a non-zero constant, and then you can subtract over, and you get this uh, y2 is, is less than or equal to this. And then you can do it the same. Like when you take out y2, you know that y3 and 4 have to be less than y1, and you could subtract over y4 in the same way. Here, if you take out y2 and y3, y4 has to be less than or equal to 1. So we're creating these little regions that we're going to integrate out. Um, so here, now we find the joint density of y1, 2, and 3, y1, 2, 3, and 4, which means we plug in these values to here, which they all cancel except for the y1, and then uh, take it times the absolute value of the Jacobian, which is 1. Now we start integrating out y2, then we integrate out y3, and then y4. And then, so those are the regions. And um, so here there's no y2, so then um, the antiderivative is y2, and then you plug in these values, you get this. So this, this is times, that's not in the exponent. Uh, then um, 
I want to separate since the next one is Y3 I want to kind of group the Y1 and Y4 together and separate the Y3 um, which is what this step does so I, I take uh, this times Y1 minus Y4 and then I take this uh, into the minus y3 part because that's that's what we're integrating so there's no y3 here so the antiderivative is just y3 then you plug in this and this to the to the uh, equation um, and then it ends up this making this squared and then here this is going to be one half uh, y3 squared and then we integrate in you know plug in the limits here and we get this equation now notice that this is the same of, as this except for there's a half so we're taking this whole minus a half of what that is so you get one half of this back which is what we do here now we need to integrate with respect to y4 which is uh, in here so we do a u substitution of u is equal to to this piece and so the der the derivative of it would be minus uh, dy4 and we get this and when you plug in the limits of integration notice that this kind of is reversed now if you want you could flip that and get rid of the negative but I just leave it like this and then the antiderivative of this is going to be one over or one third u cubed so that, that's where the third and the cube. Now we plug in zero, we get zero, and then minus, plug in this. The minus and minus cancel, and we're left with this distribution here. Now we can manipulate this a, a little bit to look like this, and then, then it becomes evident that it's a chi-square with eight degrees of freedom. And so uh, the general form that we're, or the pattern that we're seeing is, if xi is chi-square 2 from 1 to n and we're going to add those chi-square random variables the resultant distribution is a chi-squared of 2 times n now we spent four pages explaining that with just you know using the sort of the first principles of random variable transformation but it should be noted that if you use characteristic functions this becomes much 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 easier and I have a video called some applications of characteristic functions where we look at the sum of chi-square random variables and in, in, in about you know the same you know this much space we prove that the sum of chi-square random variables is again chi-squared with adding the degrees of freedom um, so I would encourage you to, to go look at this video, but that's all I have for today So hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye